The flute is not just close to your mouth, it's also close to your nose. nose. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marcus and I play the Shakuhachi. Now for the next installment of the Shakuhachi introduction series, taking care of your instrument. So I've done a few videos on how to get your first instrument and maybe at this point you already got your first bamboo instrument so you need to know how to take care of it so that it doesn't break. Overall it's good news, shakuhachi are very robust instruments. Um, the komuso, the mendicant zen monks that made the shakuhachi popular, um, they are said to have used the shakuhachi as a weapon. So. I'm assuming this is why there was the root end and then you maybe used it this way. Um, I'm of course not condoning this um, for ethical as well as for pragmatic reasons, but um, that's the story anyway. And it is an indication that the shakuhachi in general is quite a robust instrument. So there is not really a lot of danger that it breaks. However, there are two things that you have to be really careful about. One is cracking of the bamboo and the other is the chipping of the utaguchi. So let's start with the cracking. Shakuhachi are made from bamboo, at least if you have a bamboo instrument. So this is a natural material and you have the fibers here, which is how the bamboo stalk grew. And um, there is the danger that these fibers come apart. This can happen when the instrument gets too dry. That's the main danger. So in a nutshell, don't let your bamboo shakuhachi dry out. The main danger here is heating. In particular, if you live in a cold climate, you will have indoor heating. And this means that the room humidity can get quite low. This can be a problem for a bamboo shakuhachi because this may cause the bamboo to crack. Another issue about the humidity is that you should not expose the bamboo to rapid changes in humidity. So taking it from a very wet environment to a very dry environment or vice versa. This can be particularly tricky if you're in an unfamiliar environment. Say you're in a hotel room and you brought your shakuhachi and you just put it on the bed and then there may be an air conditioning and the airstream may just hit the instrument and this may cause the instrument to dry out very quickly and this can be a cause of cracking. So in particular, if you're in an unfamiliar environment, always take care that you know where you place your shakuhachi. The last point about humidity is that you should take care that the outside humidity and the inside humidity, so the humidity inside the tube and outside, uh, should be similar. So there should not be too much of a difference. You may have spotted the problem here. If you play the instrument, of course, there will be more humidity inside the flute and there will actually be probably be some condensation, some moisture inside the flute. This is why you need to clean out the inside with a cloth after you play. You don't have to be too exact about this, but it's uh, recommended that at the end of your practice, you clean your flute. One method that many shakuhachi players like quite a lot is to store the shakuhachi in a plastic bag when you're not using it. So just put the flute inside, add a bit of humidity by just blowing a bit of hot air, something like that, into the bag, and then close it up and seal it with a rubber band. And this way there is similar level of humidity inside and out. I personally don't do this. I did that for a while, but I then stopped doing it because I noticed that actually for my personal living circumstances, whatever the exact reason may be, I don't know. But for my personal circumstances, it seems to be the case that if I do this, there is actually quite a lot of difference in the humidity level. So the bamboo actually um, expanded and contracted a bit. So I stopped doing that. And since then, um, I think my shakuhachi are much happier. But again, this may be very different for you. Um, also, of course, very important disclaimer. Uh, this is just my own experience and what I've heard from makers and from other players. So don't hold me irresponsible if you follow what I'm saying and your shakuhachi splits because shakuhachi crack. That's just the way it goes, unfortunately. I'll give a quick demonstration of how to clean your flute properly in a second, but I just wanted to uh, talk about the second point I mentioned in the introduction, which is the utaguchi. So as I say, overall the bamboo 
is really quite robust. This is marake, usually at least, that shakwachi are made of, and this is a very thick bamboo, so there is not really very much danger. But you have a very thin edge here, the utaguchi, the blowing edge. This is very sharp, of course, because it needs to split the airstream, so this needs to be thin. And of course, there is more danger here that if you hit it on something that this will damage the utaguchi, this will damage the, the fine edge here. So always take care of the utaguchi. You probably will have noticed that many shakuhachi have this inlay here, which is made of plastic or traditionally from buffalo horn or ivory or some material like that. And the purpose of this is mainly to make the utaguchi more durable. Um, in particular, in many jinashi flutes, for example, you don't have this. Um, and it works as well. You can play the instrument. This is, as I say, mostly for durability. But as long as you don't hit the utaguchi on anything, and as long as you take a bit care when cleaning and transporting the instrument, there is no big problem there either. So talking about transporting your instrument, what you should definitely have for transporting the utaguchi and for storing as well is a cap like this. So this is just a cap that came with the flute and you can get this from shakuhachi shops, from the many shakuhachi shops there are in the world. So I don't know, at Mejiro you can get this for just a few dollars or a few euros. So this really just goes on on top and usually there is a button in the back and then you can just close it like that and open it like that and just pull it off again. Um, and the main purpose is, as I say, to protect the utaguchi here. These are typically made of leather or some sturdy material. Um, if you're vegetarian or vegan, don't like to use animal products, there is something for that as well. These can also be made quite easily by yourself. So um, just make something in this shape, just have some mechanism to keep it in place when it's on the instrument so that it doesn't um, come off. And that's all you need really. Okay, so the cap. Now just a quick demonstration on how to clean your flute. Um, for this, as for any wind instrument basically, you just use a piece of cloth. So here I have a piece of cotton. Uh, this can be a handkerchief or um, it can be something that you buy in a shakuhachi shop <laughs> or it can be microfiber. Um, I know quite a few shakuhachi players who prefer microfiber because um, it absorbs the moisture quicker than cotton. But this is very nice. And then you have a piece of string, <laughs> very high tech, and you have a weight um, at the end. Um, this one here, again, this is from a shakuhachi shop. Uh, so this has a particular shape that is round and it basically just means that it won't damage the inside of the flute when you pull this through. But anyway, it will do as long as it doesn't um, damage the flute, of course. Next problem, you have the weight on one end, you have just a bare string on the other end. How do you fix this to the cloth? Well, you can just use a thread and needle. Many people do that. Um, I like to use a very simple knot. Um, and if you cannot follow this, just pause the video, rewind and pause the video. Um, it's not really very complicated knot. Um, or send me a comment and tell me to make a video on how to make this knot or something like that. I don't know. Right, okay. So <laughs> take one end of the cloth, use your index finger, the string, goes on this side with the cloth. Um, I hold the two ends then like this and just fold over this edge of the cloth, okay? So that the, the string goes through this edge or around this edge. So hold it like this. Then you take this short end and you bring it around like this, okay? Then Pull your index finger out, just hold it with your other hand and just put this one, this end through here and just tighten the knot. Okay, that's it. Then you can use your cloth to clean the flute. The nice thing about this knot is that once you're done cleaning your flute, you can just take these two ends, so the edge and the rest of the cloth, just pull it open 
and then you can pull off the string and there is not even a knot in here. Okay, so it comes apart cleanly. So it's a very simple method. Um, and once you've done it a few times, um, it becomes second nature and you actually have to think about what you're doing when you're explaining it to other people. Okay, so I'm making the knot again. Now we have the cloth on the string. We have the weight at the other end of the string. Now, how do we clean the flute? Take your flute. Um, the weight goes into the top end. But remember what I said about the utaguchi and that you need to protect it. The standard way to protect your utaguchi is to place your thumb here um, so that it comes over the top a bit. I hope you can see this. The camera is focusing like wild. Okay, so um, hold your thumb like this to protect the utaguchi because there may be, uh, I don't know, the cloth may have fallen down to the ground and there may be some dirt on it or there may be a small stone or something like that. And when you pull this through the flute, this may damage the utaguchi. So this is why you need to protect the utaguchi like this. Then take the weight, let it drop. So it falls out at the other end. Okay. Then the cloth goes up here. You take the other side and you just pull and the cloth on the other side goes inside and magically appears on the other side. Okay, sorry, I'm a bit silly today. So do this twice. So again, where it goes in, just let it drop, pull the cloth through twice like so, and that's it. Okay, then uh, you're done with the cloth. Next thing should be automatic as well. Put on the cap, close it, and your shakachi should be clean and safe, at least for the moment. One more thing about instrument care. Um, the, this obviously is something that is very close to your mouth. So after a while, even if you have ideal dental and oral hygiene, um, after a while there will be some smell developing on the flute. It's no big problem at all. Just take a bit of water. Um, so I just take a bit of water on my finger, something like this, um, rub it here. Again, being careful with the utaguchi. Um, usually where, at least for me, most of the smell is here on top. So I always make sure to clean this here quite well. And here on the back as well, all around. As I say, just a few drops of water. Don't overdo it. And then take a clean cloth. So let me take my handkerchief, which I've not used yet. <laughs> and then just rub it off a bit um, so that it dries and that you get all the residue that's on the flute. It's really just a smell issue, right? The flute is not just close to your mouth, it's also close to your nose. So you don't really want to have any smells um, distracting you from playing the flute. That's why you do this. Um, if you can live with the smell, don't do it. That's fine too. Right, okay. That's all you need to do to clean the shakuhachi. Sometimes a bit of dust is collecting in the finger holes. You can take that out if you like. Again, that is not absolutely necessary. Okay, so put on the cap and that's your shakuhachi. Um, as I say, uh, you can put this in a plastic bag now. Um, I personally don't do it, but you will have to find out that for yourself, it really depends on your living circumstances. So that's all about cleaning your flute and making sure that the humidity stays as constant as it can be. But you may have a flute that you can take apart in the middle. And um, I'm including this here as well, even though this is not strictly speaking <laughs> instrument care, if you like, but um, I don't think this warrants a video on its own. So if you have a flute like this, um, take your flute, take your, in my case, left hand, um, put it between thumb and your fingers, gently close your fingers around the flute, and then use your other hand, the right hand in my case, and just gently hit on the knuckle here and pull apart the two parts of the shakuhachi um, very gently. So this takes a bit and then you can just take it apart like this. Okay. What you should never do 
is in particular if you have a good joint, if you have a quite tight joint, never just pull the instrument apart. This really has the danger of damaging it. Um, and that's what we want to avoid, of course. Also, when you put the flute back together, don't twist the flute um, when you're putting it onto the joint, okay? So what I'm just doing now is okay because it's just the very end of the joint. But if you already pushed it onto the joint, never rotate it. It's not so much a problem with modern shakuhachi where the joints are actually quite round. But for the old shakuhachi where this was really made of just a piece of bamboo, you never really got something that was really circular. So when you twist it this, then you always had an oval shape. I'm exaggerating, of course, an oval shape like this and an oval shape like this, and you were twisting them against each other. Okay, and this had the danger of damaging the flute. And it's just very good practice not to get into the habit because it's not necessary anyway. Right, okay, so the flute is apart. Now, how do you put it back together? There are small marks at the end, on the top and on the bottom, and you line up these two parts and you gently push the flute so that these two points meet until you cannot pull it anymore. Then put it against your upper body and just push it gently until the flute closes and both ends meet. Okay, no magic, uh, no weird skill you have to acquire for that. Just um, be careful and uh, don't try to force anything. Okay. Uh, because, as I say, the joint has the potential of breaking when you use a lot of force. One more thing that I can add in here, for which I need to take the flute apart again, <laughs> is that sometimes the joint becomes a bit loose. And for that, um, a very nice hack is just to use some clear tape. So, as you can see here, I hope, is that I just put a bit of clear tape on this part of the joint and this helps closing the joint and making it more tight. So again, a very low tech solution. Um, there is no need to do anything fancy about this. Um, just a bit of clear tape will do in this case. If you find that even without clear tape, your joint is very tight, you can use a bit of grease, just a bit of lubricant. Traditionally, male Japanese shakuhachi players used hair grease which apparently works quite well and also has a nice smell if you like the smell of hair grease. So that's what they used. Um, or you could use some Vaseline or something like that. So again, you don't need anything fancy. Um, just don't overdo it. Don't put a lot of stuff on here. Just um, add a bit to make it easier to put the flute together. So now you have your flute in two parts and this is good for transport. So how do you transport it? Usually you have a bag like this, which is just really a simple sleeve of a thick material. So there's a bit of padding and there is a string here um, to close it. That's the traditional Japanese way. You can also have a solid case and put it in there, something like that. It really depends on your personal taste. Just make sure that you protect your flute when you carry it around. That's just common sense, okay? But when you use a, a bag like this, the standard recommendation um, how to put your flute inside is to put in the top first, this bit, in this orientation, okay? So um, the blowing edge on the top and put it inside. Then you put this bit in upside down. The first bit goes in upright this bottom bit goes in upside down, just like this. Make sure when you drop it down that you uh, prevent it from falling onto the other bit. Then you fold over the top and you fold this together like this. So it is a nice little package. And then you have this string here and you just wrap it around a few times and you tuck the end bit in and pull it tight and that's it. And this is a good way to carry the flute. The reasoning behind doing the one bit upside and the other bit down is that 
the joints are not on the same side. So one joint is one joint is here on this end of the package, the other joint is on this end of the package. And this protects the joint a bit more because on the side where you have the one joint, you also have the Utaguchi cap. So this gives even a bit more of padding. That's the reasoning behind it. I'm not sure how dangerous it is to ignore this advice, but this is how I was instructed and this is how I'm passing it on to you. Okay, and it never failed me in this method, so um, I can recommend it, I guess. Finally, some two minor points. Sometimes you see people recommending that you put oil on the outside of the flute to help it prevent from cracking or something like that. Um, this is not really what most makers recommend. So again, I've never done this. Um, I've heard that it makes the flute very slippery, which makes a lot of sense, of course. So I've never done this and it doesn't seem to be necessary. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing it. But again, it's your instrument, do whatever you like. <laughs> the other point I want to briefly mention is that if you don't have a bamboo shakuachi, of course, you don't have many problems with cracking or with a very sensitive utaguchi. Um, the utaguchi, of course, it depends a bit. If you have a wooden shakuachi, then of course that applies as well, but um, you don't have to worry about cracking so much. So this issue of outside humidity and inside humidity is not so much of an issue with those kinds of flutes, but it's still good practice to wipe the inside with a cloth because you will find that once moisture builds up inside, this makes the playing a bit different. <laughs> and in particular, if you're a beginner, and this is an introduction series, you may find that you find it more difficult to play if there is a lot of moisture inside the tube. So it always helps to remove the moisture. All right, that's it. Um, I'm guessing, <laughs> if I look at the time, this has been a long video already again. Really, taking care of a shakuhachi is not difficult. So just take care about the humidity issue. Um, don't throw it around, don't use it as a weapon. Also, not just for practical reasons, also for ethical reasons. But it's not really very difficult taking care of the instrument. So, I hope this was useful. And as always, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, that's my next big goal. Um, it would be nice if you helped me along that way. If you liked the video, please like it. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or you want to Give me some praise. I always like that as well. <laughs> and um, apart from that, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.